Folks, we're going to talk about used tractors today and what is considered a low hour tractor. Now, this is going to be revolving around compact tractors, subcompacts, utility tractors, I guess, as well. But we're not talking about the, the big ag, you know, farm stuff you see out in Iowa and all the other states that are planting corn and soybeans and all that. That's a different, a totally different animal, okay? And so we're just talking to small guys. And so one of the reasons I want to do this video, though, is because, one, it's a big decision. Should you buy new or used? And if you're buying something with just 100, 200 hours on it, think about it. Put in that frame of reference if you're only going to put another 100 hours a year on average. And most folks, I will say, when they get a tractor, they're going to put more hours on it in the first year and then less hours in subsequent years because you have a whole huge list of projects to do in that first year. And then kind of after that, you may have some projects that come up here or there, but then it's kind of almost like it switches more to maintenance mode. And so it's just less time just to kind of maintain the stuff that's going on. But you could save thousands over buying new and just get a low hour used one. And you're still going to have one, two, three decades of use out of it if you want it, unless you want to get something different because it doesn't meet your needs or you don't need it anymore. You know, if you're only putting 100 hours a year on a tractor, that's 3,000 hours in 30 years, right? So use all that information in a, in a big, you know, just put it all on a list somewhere and, and just help yourself be reminded of this is why I'm looking for this kind of a machine. I just had this come up with a customer recently who bought a 4066R from me, it didn't even hit our website. He got a price quote that he sent me from his John Deere dealer out in, in, uh, in the West Coast, I think it was in Washington State, and it was 78 grand for just the tractor. Was a cab, 4066R with some upgrades on it, air ride seat, all that kind of thing, heavy duty bucket. We had one with air ride seat, heavy duty bucket, 291 hours on it. Ended up getting him the tractor with all the hydraulics, third function up front, a four port hydraulic multiplier on the back, snow pusher, quick hitch, box blade, grapple. There was another one or two attachments. All of that for the same price as the tractor itself, for the exact same price. It was like 78,000 and change for the brand new one, and then 78,000 and change for the used tractor, all the attachments and delivery included. So there's a huge potential cost savings to go used and get something that has barely any time on it, just see in one service interval, and then put that money to use elsewhere. You know, a really good way to think about hours on a tractor in a different way is to break it down by smaller chunks of time, you know, like by month or by day or by week. You know, you think about it by year even. And if you say, we've done polls before too, that say, you know, how many hours a year do you put on your tractor? And Far and away, most of them put 100 hours or less on their tractor. Again, compact tractors, not big, big ag equipment. Just say, high side, say it was 120 hours a year. That's 12 months in a year. That's 10 hours a month, all right? So that's, you know, two hours a week, two, two point something hours a week that you're using your tractor. That's such a small amount of time. And a huge reason for that is because of the fact of how efficient tractors are to get projects done that folks aren't accustomed to when they're used to using a shovel and a wheelbarrow and doing it all by hand it just it's almost unfathomable how quickly you can get work done and the size of work you can get done projects you can get done with a tractor and so break that down to different chunks of time um, and and it's going to make more sense or perhaps help you perceive it in a different way as to the amount of time that's getting put on a tractor and uh, i did a pull question about this subject. I think it's just good information for you to know. So you guys that are out there, whether you're buying or selling your tractor, right? If you're if you're looking to buy one and get into a, a tractor, what and you want to buy low hour, right? Just kind of like a low hour car, you can look at it with the same metrics if you want to, you know, just a comparable figure, what do you consider to be a low hour car or a low mile car? But uh, same concept with a tractor as well, but that's always going to be subjective. Um, and so let's just go through the poll here. The results had about 2,500 votes. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze. And it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So the question I asked in the poll, and you can find these on the YouTube community tab. It's kind of fun, we post these 
I don't know, maybe on an average once a week, something like that. Uh, different topics about compact tractors. So what do you consider a low hour use tractor? Compact tractors only. If you don't go by hours, but use some other metric or criteria, please leave a comment. No right or wrong, totally subjective. So the options that I gave, you can only give a handful of options, under 100 hours, under 500 hours, under 1,000 hours. Less than the first major maintenance schedule, okay? So a lot of tractors are gonna have um, like a 200 hour oil change interval, maybe a 500 hour hydraulic oil interval, that kind of thing. Uh, besides the break-in, you know, some, some manufacturers out there will have a break-in that needs to be done at 10 hours, 25 hours, 50 hours. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are going away with that though too. Okay, 20% of folks said under 100 hours. 59%, all right, so roughly three-fifths of the respondents said under 500 hours, which I thought was kind of surprising. And then about 20% said under 1,000 hours, all right? And I'm gonna give you my take on it, just one more person's take on it, and then uh, go through some of the comments as well where there's some interesting criteria that come into play. And I want you to use this to make a better decision when you're when you find yourself in this situation to buy something, okay? And, and if you're not looking new, if you wanna save some money and get a used tractor, then, well, this will help you make that better decision. And perhaps if what you're looking for aligns with my reasoning, then maybe we'd be a good fit too, because I sell used tractors and I have my own criteria of what I think is a low hour machine and what I try to stick to. Not all the time, there's exceptions to every rule. But uh, we'll, we'll see if we uh, match up there and, and be a good fit if you're in the market. So anyway, I, I think using tractors that I sell uh, is pretty representative of how I feel about it all, all right? And some of these comments, I'll kind of intersperse those two. There's a, a recurring theme that age comes into the equation as well as ours. And I don't know if I agree with that a lot. Um, I would be more concerned, like if I had a, a tractor that was 10 years old and I found a few gems over the years that are you know, eight, 10, 12 years old that only have less than 100 hours on them, I'm not afraid to buy that. And yeah, you wanna go through it and change the fluids and everything else. And there's some truth to, to the notion that something that sits and isn't used, that's not good for it either. But if it's stored inside, if you can take a look at all the wiring, put it through its paces, make sure it's, you know, mice haven't chewed things up and been nesting in there and creating all kinds of issues, then, you know, a 10 year old machine with less than 100 hours is great. You know, I mean, it's, I, I don't really treat that any differently than a two year old machine with under 100 hours. And in fact, you know, 10 years ago, you know, that's right when about a decade ago from now, 2023, is when the, the tier four emissions uh, started kicking in. So you gotta go 10 years old or older at this point to get the pre-emission stuff uh, that a lot of folks like to get. And that's becoming more valuable because it's harder and harder to find decent machines that are that old still with lower hours. So as I've gotten back into selling used tractors, I took some time off during the pandemic when the whole market was crazy. I've tightened up what I consider to be low hour tractors even more than I used to. And I used to really stick with about that 500 hour mark, um, which is where the majority of folks in this survey, again, three out of five voted for 500 hours or less, felt that that was low hours. And that's kind of where I used to draw my line in the sand. It was right around that number. Now I'm under 300 hours. Um, the reason for that is really not so much mechanical because you've really only got to about one service interval for most machines when you get to the two to 300 hour mark. And so you're really just kind of getting time for that first due or that first big service interval that's due. And so mechanical wise, there's not gonna be much to worry about there, but I just started to see at 500 hours, the cosmetic stuff, which I know cosmetics aren't what gets the work done, but when you're selling something that's a valuable piece of equipment, there's pride in ownership. And I think that folks that um, have a nice looking machine that's for sale reflects what they probably did on the mechanical maintenance side, even simple things like greasing and, and uh, checking the air filters and whatnot just on those periodic intervals that are not a major thing. Um, so the closer to zero hours, the better. And there's some other comments that are interspersed there as well as you know, you can see a, a hundred hour tractor that's been beat to snot and you can see a thousand hour tractor that looks like it's just rolled off the, the factory line. So 
there's some truth to that. And I think if you see a, a, a bucket that's all mangled up, sure, accidents can happen, but that would be an indicator to maybe raise some more questions as to how that loader was being treated. Um, maybe double checking that everything's square on the loader. You know, if the three point is, you know, the ends are all rusted up, dinged up, painted up, or paint's coming off and everything else, you can tell that attachments are constantly on and off of there. Perhaps they were using it for a commercial purpose and just constantly switching out attachments. And not that commercial work is really necessarily any different from me going out here and doing stuff around my, my house. You're still just using the tractor, but maybe there's a lot of different operators on there, different skill levels that are on there. Maybe some using it hard, some using it conservatively. Point being, I took it from 500 hours down to 300 hours because I think it just eliminates more of those kind of borderline fringe situations for me. I'm able to rule out a lot of other um, marginal equipment. I'm able to rule out things that would have gone through or should have gone through two service intervals and potentially didn't. So if you skipped one major interval at the 200 or 250 or 300 hour mark and you got another one coming up at about 500 hours and there's no records of that first service interval being done, well, it's a gray area, right? It's a question mark. I mean, is a machine gonna survive without going through that first major service interval? Probably, probably just fine. But is it the ideal situation? No. So I'm just eliminating potential pitfalls by going to the lower hours. And so, I mean, the, the Coyote tractors, the Kubotas, the John Deere's, doesn't matter what brand it is that I'm buying, the ones that you're seeing for the most part on my website are gonna be under 100 hours, you know, or in the 100 and some hours, in the 200 and some hours, and that's really about it. I mean, if I can get more information on the service history of it, you know, if I can get a full, complete, foolproof inspection report from the dealer that I'm buying it from, you know, there's exceptions to every rule, but I don't wanna say you'll never see a high hour machine, what I consider high hour machine on my website, it's just gonna be you know, some stipulations around it. Going through uh, uh, some of the comments here, some of them are pretty funny. Uh, let's see, age of equipment, that's, that's one that I, I kind of, uh, I, don't, I don't think that matters a whole lot to me. In fact, I, I kinda like the older ones that are lower hours. Well, here's another one though about hours though, or, or age, but um, the exception would be if people let them sit outside. And so that's where the age comes into play, right? If something's been sitting outside, that means not only is the, all the panels gonna be weathered, uh, maybe chalky or faded, um, but all the rubber surfaces, your tires, your hoses, any other fittings like that are gonna have been exposed to the elements year round for a long time. And so that's potentially, depending on how long it is, gonna make them brittle. Um, even your uncoated parts, you know, if they could potentially be rusty or, you know, probably more prone to having rodents and other vermin and whatnot uh, making a home in them. Does a 43 year old tractor with 1300 hours count as low? If you do the, uh, the hours per year, that's pretty darn low, or the hours per month. What was it used for? 125 hours per year. That's pretty specific. Ritchie Brothers. Auctioneers say 500 hours and under is a low hour tractor. I want to get it before the nincompoop does permanent damages. Less than 100 hours is ideal. Dad says you can tell how a tractor has been taken care of by the condition of the seat. Maybe, but I guess that would mean that most of the tractors I see coming from the south that are open stations are, are not taken care of because, man, the mildew seems to do a number on the seats down south. Age of the tractor. Age comes into play. What implements the current owner has and signs of wear. So folks, there you go. We've talked about it before, but even my own line in the sand is shifting too. And that's gonna happen with time. It's gonna happen for a variety of reasons and it's different for everybody. And it's tough when you ask your buddy who has a tractor, you know, what his opinion is and what his advice is. You ask on the forums, you get a lot of different opinions. You ask me, I give you an opinion and, and the list goes on. So just take all that information, right? And uh, dissect it filter through it the best you can, but it's it's a great time that we're living in to be able to have all of these resources and it can be information overload, but uh, YouTube has been really helpful for me in learning all sorts of things. And there's great videos out there showing how every different size tractor can accomplish different projects. And there's such a thing as too big and there's such a thing as too small and there's such a thing as just right. That, that bowl of porridge is just right. 
So if you're in the market for a tractor or tractor attachments, we'd love to help you out. We ship nationwide. You can see what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. Oh, or if you're looking for a, an ultimate work UTV, check out these mini dumps. You go to minidumps.com. These are gonna trounce the competition like your Gators, your Rangers, all that kind of stuff, the Kubotas. Minidumps.com for these. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.